week of Trinity 24, Thursday, the three halves of deliverance. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Psalm 13, verse 3. Dear Redeemed, the soul who has been given faith in the Lord continues to plead to him for deliverance, whether such deliverance is physical, spiritual, or both. The psalmist reflects this truth. Even though one of God's beloved children, the Christian confesses the faith and prays the promises of the Lord. Such a soul knows, either by experience or by being convinced through a hearing of the word, or both, what he has been delivered from. Being delivered from is the first half of deliverance. As one ponders the past, a soul may shudder at the thought of what life was like. For example, the man who had been born blind likely thought what his life had been like before being able to see. Such a thought might well have caused him to tremble and given him further occasion to thank Jesus for the light of the world. How much more so when one has been rescued from the spiritual darkness of sin, unbelief, and death, the Holy Spirit, working through his word, grants eyes of faith to behold the Son of God and the pardon and peace he earned for all when he suffered and died on the cross, as well as the victory over the dark tomb of death in his Easter morning resurrection. Now, dear soul, think about what your life was like before the promise was made yours, and before you were delivered from such a dead end. That very thought may work a holy dread and a humbled, grateful spirit within you. Who would ever want to return to such blindness and darkness and hopelessness? But wait, there's more. There's the second half of deliverance. You and I are not only delivered from, but we are delivered to. Consider that we are delivered from darkness of death to the light of the living from sin's debt to God's pardon, from an inheritance of wrath to the inheritance of heaven, from the devil's dominion to the Lord's heaven, from conflict with God to peace with Jesus, from the loneliness of hell's prelude to the communion of Christ, from being separated from God to being in the presence of the Lord God. And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. John 9, verses 37 and 38. This brings us to the third half of deliverance, the faithful response to God's deliverance from and his deliverance to. In other words, what's a soul to do? The man in our text for today gives us the answer. First, he listened to the word. He listened to Jesus and heard the word. As a result of this faithful man hearing the word, he grew in faith and in his knowledge of God. Second, he trusted in Jesus. Even before he said anything, the man had been given the gift of faith in Jesus the Christ. Third, he confessed Christ. In response to the question about believing in the Son of God and the Son of Man, and that this Jesus was that one, the man's creed was a simple, Lord, I believe. Fourth, he worshipped Jesus. The highest worship of God is not in doing deeds for the Lord. That's a worship of the law. Rather, the highest worship of God is to be in his presence, hearing his word, and receiving more of his gracious gifts. Forgiveness, peace, comfort, regeneration, feasting at the table of the Lord. With such blessing continually bestowed upon the faithful, they may depart in peace and be about the activities of life, bearing fruit that befits repentance. They work the work given to them in serving their neighbors, providing especially for those in the household of faith who have a need. They grow in godliness, supporting the work of the church and confessing Christ as they have opportunity. 
Prayer. O Lord, I ponder my past and shudder at my vile sinfulness, my sins, and my wretched lost condition. Even though you have called me your own, forgiven me for the sake of Christ, and made me an heir of heaven, my past rises up to haunt me at night. Therefore, in the present, in this very here and now, I call to remembrance the truth of your promise, that you, the holy and gracious, the just and merciful, the righteous and benevolent Lord God Almighty, you are with me. I ponder the future, and know that you are already there, waiting for me to arrive. On the cross and from the tomb, you have made all things ready for me. Continue to grant me your Holy Spirit, that I may believe in you, trust in Jesus, be in your divine service, remain faithful unto death, and be given the crown of life. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Amen. Hymn number 458 Great is the Lord our God, and let his praise be great. He makes the church his own abode, his most delightful seat. In Zion God is known, a refuge in distress. How bright has his salvation shone through all her palaces. Oft have our fathers told, our eyes have often seen, how well our God secures the fold where his own sheep have been. In every new distress we'll to his house repair, we'll think upon his wondrous grace and seek deliverance there. Thank you.